In this video we're going to walk through a Oracle installation using a bring your own Oracle installation per previous videos and we're going to upgrade this Windows installation up to the January 2022 patch release. In my command prompt window that we see here a couple of things that we can do quickly the first would be to show the version of SQL Plus that we're running. So a quick way to do that is to just issue that command and we can see that consistent with the Oracle provided installer 19.3 is our current release and our goal when we're done with this will be a 19.14 release. The other thing that we can double check is to confirm what our current version of Opatch is and then also to confirm that we've upgraded to a, a later release. Each patch set of Oracle will typically have its own requirements for an Opatch release, a minimum. And so we can see uh, at the current moment, if I get out of SQL and run that command, that we're at a 10.2.0.1.15. That's not current enough to apply this patch set. So consistent with our instructions, which I've really sort of condensed over here, we'll go ahead and follow through this installation. So before we get going, one of the first things the installer instructions ask us to do is to confirm whether or not we've got Perl in our path, and uh, we don't. So we can go ahead and add that variable. And we can set this variable for the Perl 5 lib. All right, now we'll go ahead and get into our Oracle working area. Each version of Opatch is a whole directory replacement. Since this is the first time we've run this upgrade package, the uh, Opatch installer, we can simply rename the current Opatch to Opatch old. And then I commented this next block. What we're going to do is unzip into that opt Oracle directory. I've staged the two zip files necessary for this installation in my c colon backslash temp folder as you can see. So if I click on the p688 starting zip file, we'll go ahead and browse to the location where we want this to be installed, which by default will be into c colon backslash opt backslash oracle. We'll extract those contents. So this is doing a whole directory placement in opt oracle. The directory then is called opatch. So having done that, what we can do is we should see just by replacing that directory content, replace the CRO patch version has now come up to 12.201.28. That's late enough to apply the rest of the patch process. Before we do any of this, um, make sure that you have a valid database export and make sure you've got a good backup of the files, particularly in opt. Oracle. And the reason for that is we're going to shut down all services. If the Opatch process has a problem, normally it will give us an indication of a problem before it becomes quote unquote unrecoverable. But I have had a couple of Opatches where late in the process it hits an issue and uh, it, in the process of attempting to roll back, it has left files deleted, not restored. And as a result, the Oracle environment was very, very difficult to get recovered. So by keeping prior to beginning all this, uh, either export a backup of the operating system, or in my case, on this environment, I have a snapshot of the whole virtual machine, then I'm ready to proceed at this point. That's my speech. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, stop the services. For Windows, there's one other service that we need to make sure is stopped. I've got it noted here. The Distributed Transaction Coordinator service was running. It has been stopped. Last thing, next thing I should say, is we'll go back into our location. This time we're going to extract the, the patch set itself into the same location. So we're going to put that into C colon backslash Oracle, we'll extract. This extraction is bigger, so it'll take a little bit longer than the Opatch extraction. Depending upon when you do this installation, your P numbers uh, could be earlier or later. Oracle's normal model is to leave the Opatch always with the same title, P68, 8, etc but the actual patch sets, they do increment those. So at the 
January 2022 release for Windows. The patch number was 33575656. The next quarterly patch set will be incremented up from that. Now we could CD into the directory that was just produced as a product of the unzip, the uncompress. Set a path variable. Then we run a prerequisite check. This prerequisite check indicates no obvious problems. So we can go ahead and uh, since we're in the directory uh, where the patch set exists, we can issue the command to apply it. All right, at this point, we're ready to try to apply our actual patch set. Super, your patch succeeded. Do a little listing. Lots of files touched. Well, patch succeeded. All right, at this point we can restart Oracle as well as the rest of the Net Backup IT Analytics stack. Super. Next thing we do, we prepare the database for what's called a data patch process. So the binaries have been upgraded through the patch set. Now we're going to log into the database, confirm that all the pluggable databases are open. And we can quit out of there. And now comes another long running process where we run the data patch process. All right, a patch has been completed. Next up in our things to do list is really just to validate that everything applied as we expected. Running a few commands here to just look for evidence, patch applied, 1938 to 1914, exactly what we expected to see. Build timestamp 19.14, command to confirm that patch looks great. Should have pointed it out when we invoked the uh, SQL plus command. Notice that we are now up to a 19.14 version. At this juncture, we are done with the patch. It would not, of course, be a bad idea to just make sure that you can get your portal UI, your portal instance. And the portal is up and functioning. And that looks great. This concludes this video.